So I'm with Elena Danan. We have just completed the first leg of a conference near Lyon, France, in a city called Valence. And it was a two-day conference, very successful. And we got to hear some really exciting news from Elena regarding her work on consciousness and the galactic civilizations. And we are going to be asking her about some of the things she discussed in her presentation and more recently in updates that she's given on her Star Nations news from Thorhan Redian about the Earth Alliance. You're listening to Exopolitics Today with Dr. Michael Sala, your source for the uncensored truth regarding the human, extraterrestrial, global and political agenda. Click the like button and subscribe to this channel. And now, here's Dr. Michael Sala. Welcome, Elena, to Exa Politics today. Thank you, Michael, for having me again. So this was a wonderful conference. Uh, uh, France is your home territory. So how did it feel being on French soil? And you had a lot of fans out there. <laughs> yes, it was very exciting. It is very exciting because we're going for a second session. Um, the people of, in France are very thirsty for the information we are bringing because we are bringing it in English for the English-speaking people uh, at the start and uh, the French people are so eager to hear this information in French and it's it's very people are very excited here and very yeah yes I was very I mean it was nice to see uh, the conference hall packed that was 700 people and and it's uh, the and the event will be repeating it a couple of days later and again that's sold out because in France I know they, they're very empirical very much focused on hard evidence hard evidence and but the kind of information that's been coming from contactees often is something that people have to feel they have to kind of uh, resonate with the with the energy and, and there is evidence but not to the extent that kind of scientists and positivists would accept so you know, can you maybe talk about that, about how hard it is for contactee information to be accepted in France? Oh, you're ex exactly, exactly right. Uh, that, that is why I could never get my story out, my simple story of abduction and rescue uh, of, at first in France. Uh, it, it was known first in America and through the English-speaking world, because in France, uh, I think it doesn't come from the people, it comes from the state or whatever, whoever is behind, that has conditioned French people to be very skeptical. And I think there's an agenda behind this. Uh, French people want hard evidence, and even when they have the hard evidence, they are cautious. It is very difficult. But in this conference, the speakers who are here, uh, Tony Rodriguez brings evidence, photographic and video evidence, because he found the places where he had been taken as a child, you know, when he was taken for abuse by elites. He shows uh, video evidence, it was there, uh, and also other evidence. Jean-Charles Moyen, he has a long list of evidence, it's incredible. Um, and People also, like me, I have a lot of evidence. And there are scientific um, also work. Dan Willis uh, was uh, made an appearance on Zoom to talk about the science of crystals that uh, we have um, enhanced, we have enhanced our, our knowledge uh, with the science of crystal because I have contact with the Galactic Federation of Worlds, Jen Han Eredion, and Una also the cedars and my contacts gave Dan Willis and his team of scientists evidence, scientific evidence that could be uh, cross-referenced with other researchers and uh, confirmed, corroborated and it works, goes the step further. Um, Chris Esson also demonstrated scientifically because he's an engineer and he's a scientist uh, about the, the existence and the mechanisms of Ether, which matches uh, my claims of being on board spaceships. You know, when I describe in my books, I'm on board spaceships and I see this and that, and I'm told that the spaceships work as such with this 
engine, core engine, torsion field. I describe, I write and I describe what I'm told and what I see, but in my own ways. People like Chris Esson, for instance, who are scientists specialized in these sciences, um, they, they are over the moon because they can corroborate everything. It brings answers to them even, to their questioning about how torsion fields can, can make a ship levitate or how do you uh, move a ship, then how you, you propel it. Uh, it matches with um, other uh, contactees and uh, people who worked in America for secret programs as well, you know, like the flux liner, for instance. So it's so many evidence that we bring and uh, French people, they have eyes like, oh, wow, and it's, I think they are thirsty for that, you know. Yeah, I, I know uh, I did my presentation on, on JP and uh, his contact experiences both before joining the army, after joining the army. And I know that a lot of people in the audience were so impressed that he had a lot of photos, dozens and dozens of photos, good quality photos of the various craft, tri flying triangles, flying rectangles, flying saucer craft, that he had photos and even video of these. And I know a lot of people often think of contactees and say, oh, well, lots of stories, they don't have any evidence, but it's right there. And I think that impressed a lot of people. Yes, yes, yes. I, I, I have few photographic evidence, but my evidence are the information and the science I bring that is mm. always, always corroborated. Now, your presentation was very interesting. You, you talked about consciousness. So you want to just, in a thumbnail, just cover what it was that you were discussing? I wanted French people, because I covered this topic in English for the English public already, but I wanted French people to uh, discover the mechanism of consciousness, of what is consciousness, what, where it originates from, and how are we made you know, what are we made of, um, what are the different types of consciousness, uh, what is the process of evolution, of incarnation into matter, and uh, I went over all these topics. Now, one of the things that is very interesting is the difference, or is there a difference between consciousness and soul? Is there a difference? Are they the same thing? And how does that relate to the kind of fractal nature of the universe? Uh, the term soul and consciousness is often uh, used both for the same, same term. Uh, consciousness is the awareness, the sentience, the existence. Uh, some people call it the isbi. The, the, the being that is aware of itself. Soul, the word soul can be used for this, but also the word soul has been also used for the etheric body, the, 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 or, the, or the light body, you know, there. Uh, so it's two different things, but that it merges, it merges at one point, because the etheric body is the core uh, seed of who we are. The consciousness, we are conscious of ourselves. We are sentient and we are also at the same time a plasmic consciousness, a plasmic being that goes from, from avatar to avatar along the incarnations. So I would say soul and consciousness are pretty much the same thing to make it more simple to understand. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, that was my kind of understanding as well. Yes. Um, so would you agree or disagree with the idea that there's technology that some extraterrestrials use to remove a soul or consciousness from one body to another body. Yes, I do agree with you. I have been told about these technologies. Uh, this is unnatural. Uh, you usually don't do this except if you have a specific program. And there are dark programs and uh, positive programs. The dark programs are programs performed by, for instance, dark secret space programs uh, or, the re or reptilian, Draco reptilians or greys when they want to, uh, the Draco reptilians and the greys, they will want to study consciousness and study a soul. So they will extract a soul from a human, a human soul, and put it in a reptilian or a grey body to see 
if a grace, if grace, for instance, could uh, become empath or have the powers of the human soul that they don't because they are hive consciousness. Uh, also, in the dark secret, secret space program, for instance, they will take a consciousness to put of someone to put it in a clone. For instance, a super soldier in in the positive space program. Also, a super soldier is wounded to death, and you can't repair the body because you're not don't have te this technology at reach of hand. You're going to have the the choice to extract the person's consciousness and put it in a clone. And that works a lot. I think Tony Rodriguez had this kind of experience as well. I remember interviewing Randy Kramer back in 2014, and, and I remember him telling me that there was technology, he called it soul scalping. Soul scalping, yes. It, where they could take a portion of the soul, just a small portion of the soul, to animate a clone. And he described the, that when yes. they did that, that the clone was often kind of lethargic, didn't have the vitality of a normal human, but was still functional, could yes. still do the things it was ordered to do. Yes. So, and he, and I remember him saying that it was uh, up to 10,000, it could be done up to 10,000, they could take 10,000 soul extracts to populate clones. Yes. So is that possible? Do you know? Yes, it's possible. And in that, uh, in that case, you create an artificial hive with the mm. queen, if we can like, call it like this, would be. King, a king, the king clone, the king clone is the, the original consciousness that stays in the original yeah, body, yeah, yeah, yeah. but which is still aware, and the the, the king, the <laughs> king clone, can uh, everything the king thinks, all its all his clones are thinking. It's right. interconnected because it's the original, uh, originally the same individual consciousness, because humans are individual consciousness. Um, so it's fractal, so it's still one consciousness, even if it is fractal in many mm -hmm. parts, still one. So there's a kind of a hive mm -hmm. system there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, one of the guests I interviewed, uh, George Kavasilis, he believes that the soul, someone that's centered in their soul consciousness, absolutely cannot be affected by technology. What, what do you think about that? I think that's very interesting because if you manage to have the full control of your being, mm -hmm. your or soul, um, and all consciousness, um, you you can achieve that. I believe it's achievable that uh, you can resist technology and you can train your being to be unbreakable. You know, I think um, I will give you an example that's a bit sidetrack but i have studied shamanism and in shamanism i've been taught uh, methods which are called soul retrieval so under trance you're going to go and see retrieve pieces of souls of their consciousness that the person has left in for instance places where the person has maybe had car accident was traumatized and piece of they have anchored a quantum point and they are linked still. Or for instance, they had a childhood trauma and a piece of their soul would be stuck in time in as them, them as a child. So you go and find these pieces and you bring them back to put it back into the body through the chakras. There's a system to do that. So that's very interesting too because that's a natural uh, phenomenon that occurs naturally with emotional trauma. It's very interesting. Uh, we can talk about the star seeds as well. Star seeds is the same process uh, for those who decide to keep their bodies, original bodies, in stasis in a pod and project their consciousness into a fetus somewhere else in the universe. So that is also technology extracting consciousness from a body that is put in stasis and sending this consciousness with coordinates somewhere in the womb of a woman. In another planet that also is not the exact same technology, but it is still done with technology. Fascinating. And, and maybe if you just, if we kind of finish up by just this kind of fractal nature of the universe and the human existence, I mean, uh, 
do we step into our full power if we can kind of like integrate or understand how we are mirrors of all that is? Yes, that is uh, one of the, the points I really want to, to push everyone to discover and understand. Understand, sometimes mm -hmm. as we say. Um, what, I, what I describe, what I was shown and I saw with my own eyes, um, is that the universe is the creation of a creator source that is um, an eternal reservoir of consciousnesses. It's one consciousness. And this consciousness, this source of consciousness, would is um, constantly shooting like arrows, fractals of itself throughout the universe, the creation. And each each arrow is its little piece, um, shoots, it's a part of the central consciousness. Um, and we can say that every shoot, every fractal of this consciousness, this big source of consciousness, is the same. We spoke about soul scalping, which is done artificially, it's something else. But in this idea of a central consciousness with little fractals of mm -hmm. itself, it's exactly the same way of thinking it. Um, so when we realize that we are, everyone as us, as a sentient being, a fractal of creator source, and that illusion, the, uh, it, the illusion is the separation, separation is illusion, we realize that we are made of the same substance as the creator, or however you want to call it. And when we realize that, you think, oh, but I can create as well. Yes, we co-create our consciousness, co-create the reality say, with, with creator. We are co-creators. It is, you know, as I described in my presentation, uh, there are uh, three um, constants that make up the universe. Three constants. It's time, space, and consciousness. Time is eternity, space is infinity, and consciousness is oneness. So when we are aware that time is eternal, there's no beginning, there's no end. It's a field, it's a quantum field, time. Everything exists at the same time. But space is infinite. Space is not like Einstein described uh, wave uh, space continuum is not like a, a mesh it's not like this it's the same it's a quantum field and it's there's no boundaries and that consciousness the third constant of the the creation is oneness there is not um one master creator and a little uh sub you know sub souls no it's everything is one every creator is not only source, the source, it's its creation. It's us. We are creator. I think that's very important, uh, that kind of connection that we can make between our individual self and the kind of universal self. People have different ways of talking about it. But yeah, I agree that the more we can make that connection or to integrate that, uh, the more we become immune or we're protected from all of these technologies that the dark forces have because I mean it's a scary thing I mean when I first came across that to to know that there's technology that could transfer my consciousness from this body to another body I, I remember mm -hmm. being contacted by a, a young man who says that he uh, had an affair or fell in love with with a girl who was uh, only 14 and, and her father belonged to the Illuminati and, and he was punished because he didn't listen. He was punished, taken into one of these programs and he said that his body was transferred, so his consciousness was transferred into the body of another 14-year-old girl. And and then, and, and then, yeah, that that's scary that they can do that. That is, yes. With technology you can do that, yes, right. indeed. But achieving this unity consciousness this understanding that we are one with 
the universal creator, then we're protected from that stuff. Yes, and we're protected by any information carried by fear to put us down and to divide, you know, the divide and conquer agenda. Mm -hmm. That is something that we know they do. Uh, we are not subject anymore to be influenced, to, to be divided in groups, you know, because when we really, really assimilate this awareness that we are one, we are just fractals of one creator, which is also us. The only separation is the physical separation. It's the bodies we borrow for a lifetime to experience, you know. It's, we are creator experiencing evolution through these, our lives, you know. So once we realize that, nothing can influence us anymore. And we understand that we can co-create this reality. Consciousness has the power to create reality. If we don't know that, I always say, the, the <clears throat> later agencies know, know it, and they knew it for a long time. That's why they have been bombarding humans with information uh, such as alien invasion, scary scenarios, etc., etc., wars, uh, possibility of wars, that we, under the, 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 the frequency carrier wave of fear, we tune into that and create it, because they can't. So when we realize that, we say, wait a minute, I'm not going to listen to these guys anymore. I'm going to create the reality I want. Now, you do a weekly update called Star Nations News, and you have a number of galactic uh, individuals that you are in contact with and that you relay messages from. Now, uh, Thorhan Redian is one of those, and you've uh, relayed a lot of messages uh, from him. Now, a couple of weeks ago, you relayed some very interesting information that he had about the Solar Warden program, mm -hmm. how they're going to unveil that, uh, not by kind of admitting that it was built in the 1970s and 80s, and but they're going to do it in another way. So can you uh, explain exactly what, what, they're going, what the plan is? Yes, the, the plan is um, not to suddenly bring disclosure by front, like a, a big catastrophic disclosure now, which they will eventually, not to bring the catastrophic disclosure now because the deep state still is in power. So if they would bring the catastrophic information, well, catastrophic in the good way, okay, we agree with that, good way, um, they, it would cause problems and chaos because the deep state is still in power. So they would twist this information into making people believe that the Galactic Federation, for instance, are the bad guys, and that what well, that will abort the whole disclosure operation. So they are they, they told they tell they are telling us that we really need to do the work of becoming aware of our power and not feeding the deep state scenarios ever again, and that in con conjoint operations with infiltration operations of the Earth Alliance into the governments and the background agencies, um, we, can, we are working together. Because two things are happening. There's the, the Great Awakening of Humanity, but there's also the Earth Alliance working uh, at of course, they done military operations in the underground, but they're working also as they have been working also at infiltrating the governments, the secret agencies, background agencies, and organizations. For when the moment comes, can flip like this, and uh, threatening agencies are not threatening anymore. So that's the information that Thorhan brought about these infiltrations, which is very important. Yeah, I think that's very important that a disclosure process that moves too quickly could be 
leveraged or taken advantage of by the deep state to spin things in a way to make it look like we're being invaded as opposed to we're being helped. They would positive. help it. They would take, uh, sorry, they would um, take advantage of it. Right. You know. Yes. Uh, Thorhan says something which I loved. I think that's, that's so beautiful. He said at the end of his uh, message, he said, uh, it is not the great reveal that will set us, set you free, but it is your endeavors to set yourselves free that will allow the great reveal. Yeah, that's very important. Um, this situation is very analogous to something that I read in the Phyllis Schlemmer books, The Only Planet of Choice, oh. and where they talked about the information from the nine and the 24 civilizations, saying that the original plan was that they were going to reveal themselves in the 1970s, but they didn't for this precise reason. They were saying that if they showed themselves uh, saying we're here to help you evolve and we have all this spiritual technology and we want to share and uplift you with your m true knowledge of uh, galactic history that the deep state would spin everything in the opposite direction so they said it was the plan was delayed and that was in the 70s that's it that's it so and it's interesting uh, it, it's been interesting because we're in France and the French Republic is new on all of this and you can see the fresh mind of people who are saying, who's going to come and save us, you know? And so you have to tell them, no, that's, that, that's what you've been put in the head, the savior complex, for you not to do any effort to be waiting passively while you are taking advantage of, you know? So that's what people need to realize. Stand up and make, do the work of discovering the power, mm -hmm. how powerful you are. You know, that's, that's not the new age nonsense. When I say, discover how powerful you are, your sovereignty, it's, it's important, it's crucial, because when you realize who you are, as we're talking about, we, we've talked about, sorry, when you realize that, you're invincible. And you stop feeding the deep state's narratives. You stop being manipulated. And that's the beginning of the end for them. Now, one of the things that really caught my eye in this update from Thorhan was that he said that there would be a lot of private companies like SpaceX, Blue Origins, that would be releasing these new anti-gravity technologies and that from that, these new fleets of spacecraft would be built. And, and, that, and so that rather than disclose the Solar Warden program, that was built by, say, legacy corporations like Lockheed Martin, Skunk Works, Boeing, and Northrop Grumman and all of that, rather than expose that, it'll be the new company, SpaceX, Blue Origin, that builds these new fleets of anti-gravity craft or exo exotic propulsion uh, systems for, for new fleets. And, and that will be the path for Dis disclosing the solar warden. You want to yes. elaborate on that? Well, that's very important. Thank you. Yes, um, in the at the moment, the state of things is that the deep state, of course, is still in control of the information. But there is the solar warden program that's been active since the, the 1940s. Um, so if now we disclose the solar warden programs raw as it is, we how it's been built, by whom, which companies, the deep state would twist it. So we gain time waiting for the deep state to be non-threatening anymore and waiting for that moment and then disclose the Solar Warden program as it is, talking about Lockheed Martin, talking about everything. That will happen. But we gain time uh, in that, lap that time lapse, time lapse, because I don't know, uh, we're not waiting. We are uh, putting out, developing these technologies, the same ships, but built by SpaceX, uh, Blue Origin, etc. That when the moment, as Thoran said, when the moment comes to disclose the truth about Solar Warden, the gap to jump is not that big with technology, you know not that big, that people will be already used to anti-gravity crafts, won't be that such a shock. So it's preparing that moment of catastrophic disclosure about Solar Warden because 
all the truth will be told about everything but at the right moment. But until that right moment, we're not going to wait that, pe that the deep state falls. We're preparing it. We're building that the bridge, you know, the gap is short as short as possible to cause less ca chaos as possible. So, so what do you think of the role of uh, companies like SpaceX, uh, Blue Origins? I mean, is, is that a positive thing that they play this kind of critical role in rolling out some of these futuristic technologies that they'll be the ones to roll out some exotic anti-propulsion systems to build new fleets. Uh, you, you think that's, because I know there's a lot of people that are distrustful of Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos and say all sorts of things. But to me, I, I say, well, they're the, they're the new guys on the block. They're trying to, they're trying to establish thriving aerospace companies and they're struggling against these legacy companies like, Lock, like Lockheed, Northrop Grumman, General Dynamics, that have been building this stuff for 50 years, have been working with very dark groups and are thoroughly infiltrated. So um, I, I would say, well, people like Musk, I mean, they can open things up. Yes, and something uh, that is in two things are important to, to, to mention is that uh, when the Jupiter Accords uh, occurred in July 2021, uh, these comp CEO companies like such as Elon Musk, Bezos, and there was a third one, I, I forget, sorry, um, they, they were present at the, the, the Jupiter Accords because they prepared, the Jupiter Accords prepared the future, the aftermath of the, the war in this solar system. So, and I remember at the time, it's three years ago, Florent says, because we, we, we don't have time to waste, we need to go fast. I didn't know why. Why go fast? There was going to be wars. No, 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 no more wars. Now I know. It's because the disclosure is coming and you need to be ready. And this comp so the second thing is that these companies such as SpaceX, Blue Origin and others are the front mediatic companies and the Lockheed and Northrop Grumman, they are the background companies working with the dark. So we needed companies available to be uh, uh, hired to build all these new fleets, all these new uh, space stations and that, <laughs> and all of this. And they are available. And Thorhan had told, told us, uh, told me at, at, at three years ago, uh, because they are here and they're ready. Because I said, why them? Why Musk? Because they are here and because they are ready. They are businessmen, you know. So we know we deal with businessmen. They will go to the most offering uh, boss, you know, contract. So we know that. We're aware of that. We're keeping an eye on that. Uh, but th th that's what it is. In my personal opinion, now knowing a bit the Federation, I think... I, I, I don't know about a Blue Origin, but I think about SpaceX and Elon Musk. It was planned. It, Elon Musk was working, was meant to work for the Federation from the start. I have many reasons to think that. Now, one of the other things that came up in that update from Thorhan was this, uh, was the Earth Alliance. And the Earth Alliance, he described as comprising kind of positive militaries from around the world, all collaborating, and that they have been joined by some extraterrestrial organizations. So can you elaborate on which militaries are we talking about? Are we talking about all the world's militaries? Are we talking about, say, those from Western countries? Um, I don't have, I never had a list, but I can uh, really um, suggest that it's uh, all the countries linked with the Artemis Accords. Yes, and uh, Thoran made the, the, the link, the bridge between the Artemis Accords and Jupiter Accords at the time already, that all the countries joining the Artemis Accord are working with the Earth Alliance. Yes, that, that's very, that was very clear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the Artemis Accords have currently 43 countries, all the major countries apart from Russia and China, that are part of... Uh, of a, another initiative that was launched by China and Russia uh, called the International Lunar Research Station Initiative. And currently they have 12 countries that are joined. Um, and they're smaller countries like Kazakhstan, Belarus, and uh, Thailand, kind of small countries with don't really have much of a space program. 
does this have a future? Because I know Thorhan said that China was charting a different path to collaboration with the Earth Alliance and the Galactic Federation and the Earth ET organization. So do you, and Thorhan said that eventually the, this Chinese initiative will collapse. Do you still think that, or does he still believe that? Yes, uh, Thoran and myself, we still believe that because for, for this reason, um, when the Jupiter agreements occurred in 2021, um, China and Russia were uh, not being were kind of set back because they they weren't happy that the United States would uh, would be at the head of the new uh, Earth Alliance and you know um, even the Artemis Accord, which is the same the new Starfleet, let's say. So the Russians are very clever; they're very intelligent uh, in when it comes to diplomacy, and so they are for the moment they just set back. But the Chinese they are very competitive. And they were very, excuse me, pissed off. <laughs> so uh, they are competitors to the Artemis Accords slash Starfleet Earth Alliance. Uh, the Artemis Accords, people linked with the Artemis Accords are working with the Galactic Federation of Worlds. Uh, it's also Solar Warden, the Earth Alliance is the same group, all working together. They are all bound by commercial laws of uh, safety zones, agreements. Uh, every planet in that star system has a safety zone. You cannot go in there and fight. And also now the commercial agreements have a bit imprinted on it since the hub near Jupiter has been constructed. You cannot, in these safety zones, you cannot um, slave trade, uh, trade weapons, etc., etc. They are very strict rules. Um, but the Chinese are not bound by these rules. So they are going to be do whatever they want. They are corporates, you know. So Thoran told me that at long terms, there will be more and more and more troubles. And they are not, uh, he thinks they are not going to last long. They are going to fight to, you know, for business in the star system. That's going to be very hard because the other block is, is powerful. Yes, yes, I, I agree with that. I, I think that the key is, is Russia, that yes. they at the moment are aligned with China just because what the West has been trying to do in Ukraine. And I think the Russians are, are very pissed off with the West. I mean, oh, yeah. they, they've lost 50,000 soldiers fighting in this Ukrainian war, at least. Yes. On, on something that from the very beginning they wanted to negotiate and, and resolve diplomatically, which in previous times would have been done very easily. But this time it was like the deep state wanted a war and they, and they got a war. And the Russians have been saying, well, we, we can resolve this peacefully. Let's do it. But the, but the deep state keeps on driving this war agenda and, and the European Union seems to be and the Biden administration seem to be fueling that. So I think that's driven Russia into the hands of China. But I don't think that will last forever. At some point, whether it's five years, 10 years, I think the Russians will realign with the West because yes. they don't trust the Russia, uh, the Chinese at all, I don't think. Yes, yes. And also regarding the moon, this uh, lunar station, Chinese lunar station, uh, something is uh, important to understand is that the moon was liberated from the hands of uh, regressive extraterrestrials a few years ago, two years ago, two years, three years ago. Uh, and the moon was now is now in the custody of Earth. So, as Thorman told me at the time three years ago, moon is Earth problem. They can do they're gonna do whatever they want with it. Uh, there's, if there's a corporate fight for the moon, we're not intervening. It's not our problem. It's not our jurisdiction, you know. So they're probably going to be to be a corporate war for the moon. You know? But, you know, the Earth Alliance is on the moon as well, so that's not going to go very far. <laughs> now, this position uh, that the Galactic Federation is taking towards disclosure seems to me to be very pragmatic. Uh, they understand the nature of the problem on Earth where there's this deep state that still has a tremendous power that can spin any disclosures in a way that uh, suits their agenda, which is the war agenda, so that the 
what the Earth Alliance is doing with the Galactic Federation is follow, and, you, and it was called this a progressive UFO disclosure. Yes. To just kind of release more and more. So, and I think that's very pragmatic as opposed to going for something which is much more kind of like adventure or much, much bigger, like a control, so like a catastrophic disclosure that I think a lot of people want that are listening to this. They want that. But I think the point that Thorhan makes that this would be spun by the deep state is a good one. So you want to comment about that? Yes, catastrophic disclosure will happen, but it will happen when the time is right, when the deep state will, won't be able anymore to flip it over, to, to spin it. Um, so in that meantime, this catastrophic disclosure is being prepared. We are not doing anything, you know. The Federation and the Earth Alliance are um, sending uh, whistleblowers, for instance. Uh, I know David Grush was one of, is one of them, for instance. And there's many other whistleblowers that are going to come more and more. And, and new, these new technologies new alleged new technologies which are not new like anti-gravity crafts are going to you know be implemented in everyday life for everyone that when the moment comes it means the deep state has no more power on disclosure anymore catastrophic disclosure of what is left to be disclosed will happen but everything it will happen people need to hear that it's planned but when the moment is right and in the meantime, let's work for it. Now, I know in 2021, when the CEDARS, the uh, Intergalactic Confederation arrived, and you got information about that and, and were part of, you, know, you got to kind of meet some of these groups. I know JP went out there. He was part of a mission uh, explicitly to greet these visitors from a very powerful organization. And the information that was coming was that uh, the regressive ETs, the Draconians, the Grey, Naboo, uh, the Maitre, that they they left, they that they were forced to leave our solar system because of the arrival of these of these groups. And some people thought, well, well, now we're going to have disclosure and the Earth is liberated now. But what was not foreseen was the power of the deep state to hold on to power. Has it been a real surprise? to the Galactic Federation, how tenacious the deep state has been in holding on to power? They knew, it wasn't a surprise because they knew uh, exactly what they were doing in what they did. And, and Thoran said it, uh, and Una also said it many times, uh, we are off-world people, we are uh, removing the off-world problems from your planet. And you are humans of Earth, you are taking care of the humans of Earth means the human deep state. The deep state was organized as a pyramid, as we know it, and the top of the pyramid was the extraterrestrial custodians of overlords. This has been truncated, the, the head has been removed, so there are no more extraterrestrials, uh, overseers or, you know, overlords or about this pyramid, so now they are only humans, human uh, deep state. And because of the, the prime directive and it, it's it's they are letting humans take care of that and encouraging us but they are helping us also undercover with all the building the earth alliance uh bringing whistleblowers etc but um the the prime directive is not just a set of laws it is the cosmic laws of evolution that are put into set of laws to help people understand better uh, the reg regulation it's put in regulations for you know everyday practicality logistics now at, at the beginning of 2023 in january uh thorhan region was went to a location in the blue ridge mountains and we discussed that at length and delivered a disclosure plan uh, to the head of uh, u.s northern command and, and that disclosure pl uh, plan is presumably playing out right now. 
Now, on the, at the same hand, on the, at the same time, there is something that the kind of US patriot community say, describe as the show. They say that, uh, this whole Biden administration is just a show to, to wake up, uh, people on the progressive left to the existence of the deep state, that Biden isn't really in control and that white hats are supposedly behind the scenes pulling the strings. So I wanted to know, what do you think? Is this plan that the Galactic Federation has put in place, does that involve something like this show that patriots in the US believe is necessary to wake up those on the kind of liberal progressive side? I, I, I'm not following this thought, this um, I, I wouldn't agree because we're well, talking on behalf of Thoran, of course, mm -hmm. because I know that they are waiting first for the deep state to lose power, to bring disclosure that's very clear, to bring the catastrophic disclosure. Thoran calls it the great reveal. Uh, and um, so it would be already done if it was, you know, the... the the administ Biden administration at the moment would be just to show to help people wake up. So now, you know, disclosure is needed. So they're waiting, they're eagerly waiting that the, the deep state is collapsing, that the people make the, the, the effort. And that's very interesting is that there are two levels. Galactic Federation is waiting for the people to stop complying to the deep state and uprise and make the work, etc., etc. But on a higher, I would say higher, deeper level, when you we step back and we look, or we look at this situation from a higher perspective, the whole Biden administration thing is also helping people to wake up because it's so shocking. It's so, you know, that, that people say, hey, wait a minute, I don't want that. So then it wakes up people. So there's these two levels, but I do not know, I do not think it's, um, it's a plan. Uh, I think they, these, these guys are really bad. <laughs> so how much power does the deep state still have? I mean, since 2021, the, the negative ETs have left. Uh, there's been a lot of disclosures, a lot of exposure of the deep state agenda. There's a lot of people now that, due to different events that were contrived, are awake. Uh, does the deep state still have some powerful cards it can play, like, uh, say, a, a global event or national events that can create uh, a catastrophic series of events? Because I know there's a lot of people that are talking about some kind of event coming soon uh, that's going to be created by the deep state to kind of like a, far, like a final card. Do you think that's possible? We never know. They, we, it's possible. I think it's possible. Um, but they, they have more, they have, sorry, they have less power than they pretend. And now that the, the, the support from other world, I mean, the Sikar Empire, the, the, the Enlil faction of Anunnaki and uh, the, the, the Greys have all left them, they're on their own. And the only thing, the only power that, that they have now, it's the, the system of laws. They can block things with the laws, uh, bringing new uh, laws, you know, to block, for instance, disclosure, things like that. That's their, their, their power. They hold on to that and the economy of war. That's the, so creating wars and using laws to block what they don't want to come out. But also, you know, they, have, they had agendas like, we know, we all heard about Project, Project Blue Beam, alien invasion or salvation, as you cleverly uh, suggest, uh, you know. Uh, I think, yeah, uh, I think, well, Thoran always told me this will not happen because the people know now and it won't work. People are now aware of fake alien invasions. This has been going around. They're aware of holographic uh, projections. You know, there's been enough um, information on alternative medias to really expose these agendas and Pohan said it won't take, won't, won't work. 
I think they will play the cards of um, the ec economic collapse. Try they will try an economic collapse, and they would try and st they are trying uh, a third world war, which uh, will not happen from my sources. They will prevent that by infiltration, by you know. Um, and regarding economic collapse, the Earth Alliance and our allies upstairs are doing everything they can to prevent it. They have been working as at an economic transition because what I've heard many times is that people of Earth don't need more chaos. They are struggling and we do not want them to struggle even more because this will not help them to do the inner work of, you know, reconnecting to your power, etc. So the, the Alliance, the Earth Alliance is working to uh, an economic transition towards a system that will not be reliant anymore on the, 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 the banking system, you know. So that is, and there's a secret war about it, you know, because the, 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 the bankers, the central bank and the, the banker system, well, the Rothschild, and we, we know them all, they are fighting teeth and nails to hold the place. And that goes back to the question you asked me earlier on. Were the Galactic Federation of War surprised of the resilience of the deep state? They were aware that they would resist. But yes, it is. Because they went, wow, they really, really prefer destroying everything rather than just go. They know they are going. They know they are going. So now they are trying to destroy everything behind them and get as much as profit before going. You know, so that's what's happening, this secret war, but um, let's see what happens. Well, one of the things that I've noticed over the last six months, year, is that there's been a kind of surge, really, in mainstream media discussions, not of extraterrestrials, but of crypto terrestrials. And that to me was very curious. It's like, well, what's the agenda here? Why are all of a sudden they talking about crypto terrestrials? And, and you look at things like, um, you know, Ill illegal aliens flooding Europe, flooding the United States, uh, these kind of sightings of, you know, aliens in places like Peru, Las Vegas. And, and you look at uh, things like in the United States, the Congress is trying to implement, uh, or is taking the steps to reintroduce the draft. And it's like, well, why, why would a professional or volunteer army need millions of conscripts unless you had plans to contrive something like along the lines of a crypto terrestrial, a fake crypto terrestrial invasion, where it's it's kind of it's, it's confusing. It's not clear. You just have say clones coming out of underground bases attacking towns and people, but it's all very confusing. You have illegal aliens rioting. They create mayhem this way. So, so what do you think of that scenario? Oh, to me, things are very clear. Um, the, the the people from Inner Earth, there are a lot of uh, people who are living in Inner Earth, different uh, cultures. You have local Earth cultures who went underground or are native from the underground since a long time. For, and you have extraterrestrial colonies as well. But now, you know, there's been a war to clear the undergrounds of Earth and get Earth rid of all the negative reptilians. There are still reptilians, but these ones are locals and they don't want problems. I mean, they, re they remove only the negative Sikar factions, the invaders. And so that's one. And now the inner earth people have stated, and there's been councils about that, that, that these decisions, that they are going now to make contact with people of the surface that it is time and they want that. They want to, they've decided and they're doing it. They're opening um, uh, entrances to inner earth uh, in nature, parks and uh, forests, but more in parks, national parks than people can, that people can find. And slowly, slowly, and they are going to exchange and come on the surface. And they've decided, they've started doing it. All the ants people, the Telosians, and the Sasquatch, and all of this, they've decided. They're making contact, and nothing can stop that. There's also another um, thing is that these people, 
live in higher densities for some of them. So now, physical contact is able because is possible because the Earth is shifting in higher density. So now, the people of inner Earth are becoming like us. We're becoming on the same fourth density plane as them. So now it's on. We are on the same physicality. You know what I mean? So, because the Earth has entered this zone in the galaxy of fifth density, and the whole star system is shifting into this higher frequency. And so the Earth, of course. So the people who were already on Earth in a higher frequency, now that they look solid to us, you know, because we are now, now entering the fourth density of frequency, you know, we're transiting to five uh, density, fifth density. So, that's this. And all these people are, are positive, are nice, and they're going to help us to rise against the dark societies and the governments. And these dark guys, they're shaking. So, okay, emergency agenda, what can we think about? Okay, illegal aliens coming from inner Earth, crypto terrestrials, our enemies, they are ugly reptilians, they're going to murder and eat you and don't let them in your house, don't make contact with them, don't... I mean, that's it, they always do that. Mm. You know, Michael, these people from inner Earth, they're so wise. They can bring to humanity so much medicine, science, spiritual guidance. That's going to be a huge, beautiful exchange. <laughs> they don't, the deep state doesn't want that. Yeah, JP was saying the same thing, uh, that his contacts over the last year have been with these inner earth civilizations, Nordic beings, the ant people, and he was saying that they're all trying to help uh, humanity uh, evolve. They're bringing these new technologies. They want to be part of the disclosure process. And, and I think the deep state knows that exactly, and they're very frightened of that. And yeah, they're, gonna, they're doing exactly the same. They're playing the same agenda, which is they know this is coming, and so they're trying to spin things and trying to create a narrative to make it look like, oh, we're actually being invaded by these guys. But it's the opposite. Uh, that's, that's, that's so old, I think. Mm. At one point, people would start to laugh about every, every time is the same scenario. I mean, mm -hmm. they don't have a lot of imagination, but that's the only thing they can do. They can't stop them, so they're going to say, oh, but they're enemies, you know? Right. <laughs> but, you know, I mean... The, they have delayed galactic disclosure yeah. using the same technique. So they're now trying to do the same with the crypto terrestrial, yeah. playing the same, yeah. same uh, playbook. So what about the hub? You've talked about the hub and that's been under development for a while. When does it become operational and, and when, yeah, can you give us an update on the hub? Yeah, so the hub is still in construction, but it's already operational. Some seg some segments are operational for commercial exchange with um, still with uh, interstellar people, not Earth yet, because we're not yet part of the Federation and we not have yet disclosure. We can't just take a commercial flight and go like, you know, there and uh, sh go shopping because that would be already disclosure. That means disclosure would have already happened, the catastrophic disclosure. So we're waiting for that. So it, it's, it's incoming. So it, as the, the, the hub has been constructed, started the construction, we've seen on Earth suddenly commercial flights are developing with uh, uh, solar system tourism, you know, space tourism. And that's that suddenly happens in, you know, at the same time the hub is developed. That's very interesting. And the moon, uh, I know the Galactic Federation has said the moon it has been where all of these advanced technologies have been built, um, kind of like uh, healing facilities are created, uh, the um, I forgot the, the name of the, t the term, the healing chamber. <laughs> no, the oh, med beds? The med beds, there we go. The med beds are being built, the thousands of them are on the moon, ready to be used. So when is all of that going to become available? Well, so that's a very recurrent question. People are really hungry to, to know. Um, it's the same as disclosure, when the deep state is not able anymore to go against it. 
The med beds have been uh, mass produced on the moon and on some facilities in space, I know as well. Uh, they are going to be implemented slowly, slowly into uh, hospitals, but public hospitals. But they wait that it's safe. Because if it's implemented now, uh, the deep state will destroy them. You know, because med beds means it's the end of the pharmaceutical empire. It's the end of it. And that, you know, who's in charge, these people certainly don't want med beds to be there. So as long as these pharmaceutical companies, uh, it's kind of, kind of a cartel, they are still in, they still hold, hold some power, you know, um, well, they will continue to hold a little bit of power, but they will vain, you know, but as long as the people who support them, the deep state, can still protect them and support them, the med beds won't, won't come publicly on Earth because they'll be destroyed. They'll be destroyed. Yeah. Well, the, the med beds are a form of technology, holographic healing technology that uh, galactic civilizations use and can do wonderful things. On the other hand, uh, we've also are aware of uh, the alchemical sciences that you know, there are beings like Ningish Zida, Toth, uh, Quetzalcoatl, that were able to identify certain trees, certain plants that ca that have healing capacities that can. Uh, prolong life. So I think there'll be some people that will be drawn more to nature and finding nature as the source of uh, healing. And there's this uh, very famous healer, Anthony Williams, uh, that my wife kind of like uh, proselytizes me about, who's, who's really very interesting. He is also an alchemist and he emphasizes healing from herbs and juices and so forth. So are we stepping into a future where there are going to be kind of healing and age uh, rejuvenation coming from people that practice alchemical processes with nature and plants and those using advanced holographic technologies? We will have the choice. And that's Ia, or that people know by Enki, who told me this, that these med beds, these technologies, are just tools that people will have the choice to use if they want. But all he said, all the work that the med beds can do to them, they can do it themselves. Through the own power of their consciousness over their body and with natural medicine. So he said that. Um, so people will have the choice. Then med bed, you know, it, it's always, it's often used as an emergency. Someone lost a leg, you know, you can regrow it or repair it. Uh, a critical disease, something, the, people is going, the person is going to die. There's no time for uh, quick, quick, quick uh, herbal medicine. You need to intervene, you know, the people, the person is going to die. But for the rest of the people, I mean, we have the power on the web, web of reality, the network of reality, also on these bodies. We can heal ourselves and we have to relearn how to do that. And the Earth, the planet Earth, is the mother matrix of these bodies. These bodies that you see, it's made with the water of the Earth. The bones are made with the minerals of this planet. And the air, it's the air of this planet. So anything on this planet is available to heal these bodies because there's a quantum entanglement between these flesh bodies, these material bodies, and that the planet where they were made of. So we can find all the remedies here as well. We are going to be meeting again in Colorado wow. for the GC conference, the Galactic Spiritual Informers Connection, and this is where we're going to have a, a gathering of the star families. So uh, how important is this conference and why should people uh, come to see you, myself, Tony Rodriguez, JP will be there, he'll be doing a presentation, it'll be his first public reveal. So yeah, why don't you tell us? Uh, there are a lot of conferences now everywhere in the world, but the JSIC, Galactic and Spiritual Informers Connection, stands out from all the others and has inspired uh, as well many, many conferences to develop. Why it is standing out? It is, it is because the people who are coming there to speak, the speakers, are carefully vetted that they are people who bring evidence. And that's the difference. 
Everyone, of course, brings their evidence and there are information that everyone is going to bring that is going to be disclosed for the first time before being disclosed public. Uh, for instance, I know Jean-Charles and myself have a surprise that even Danny Anderson doesn't know. We are going to bring incredible evidence with videos and photos. So um, that's going to be something. But it is very special because it is not only about the speakers, it's about the public. You go there and you meet your star family. You meet your people like you who think alike, who have had the same experience and suddenly you don't feel alone anymore, you make connections and it's, it's a gathering. And I think it's, it's something that is becoming more and more important, this, this conference, the JSIC as we call it. There's been two already in Orlando and that has really, really shifted a lot of things for humanity. And the next one is in near Denver, in Westminster, Colorado. Um, and I really recommend because, you know, people like David Adair may show up on stage, um, the famous JP. So, uh, is mm, there's a, I, I would say how many percent of chance, 90% of chance that he appear on stage or we don't, we wait that his superior confirmed, but apparently it should be good JP would unveil his identity on, on stage. We'll see about that. So uh, it should happen. Well, you know, yeah, you, you need to come because this is something extraordinary. Yes. Well, I know Danny goes through a lot of work uh, to put a conference like this together. So I, I do encourage people to, uh, to come along, to, to register. You support Danny, you support the conference, you support uh, those of us that come from around the world to, to come together. Yeah, so I want to thank you, Elena, for uh, being on ExoPolitics today. Any final words you want to say about where people can go to find out more about you, to sign up for Star Nations News, or and I know you do monthly webinars. Thank you, Michael. Yes, I do monthly webinars on Crowdcast. You can find the links and information for my webinars on my through my website, elenadanan.org. You can also follow my YouTube channel, Elena Donan, where I uh, do a weekly update, Star Nation News, talking about the news from the star people uh, and the impact it has on Earth. So, um, thank you. Thank you. You have been listening to ExoPolitics today with Dr. Michael Sala. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Join or start a conversation in the comments. Take the time to explore the vast library of best-selling books, webinars, and podcasts by Dr. Sala. Visit exopoliticstoday.com.